yesterday. Let's look at the grid then for our Jerry Marshall Trophy uh, race, the uh, decider for this one. And on row one, it's one, the Stuart Cray and Nigel Garrett Chevrolet Camaro, uh, alongside 14, which is the David Clark Matt Neal Chevrolet Camaro, and then 60, the Nick Swift Andrew Jordan Mini 1275 GT. The second row is 10, uh, Richard Mines and Rob Huff for Capri. And three, uh, Manassi and Pochiol for Capri. Then we go back to five, the Snowden Whale, uh, Alfa Romeo. 25, Perryman and Piro with the BMW. 15, Fowler and Margulies with uh, a Capri. Uh, row four was the uh, Mass and Welby Rover, number two. 63, Plato and Swift alongside. Row five is the number 20, Triumph Dolomite, Morley and Reed. 27, Blackburn and Thomas in their Capri. 42, Lindsay and Waghorn in a Capri. Uh, row 6 is the Brindle Greensaw Rover number 12. 9 is the Mallet Nidell uh, Rover. Then uh, row 7, 57 Clements and Bryant uh, in the uh, little RS2000. 17, the Cowley Watts uh, Mazda. 33 is Clark and Jackson in a Dolomite. 22, the Edwardses with their Dolomite. 21 is Hall and Spurrell with the uh, Opal. McKay and Shedden uh, on row 9 in car 11, alongside them 4, Kay, uh, Kay and Scarborough, Skid Scarborough, and then 6, uh, Harrison Ward with that uh, Rover. Row 10 is 7, De Borman and Thibault, 26, Harvey and Robinson, and uh, then we go back to, that's a, uh, a head of 8, Soper and Young, 44, Morris and Shepherd with the uh, Golf GTI, 52, Bell and Mann. 40 Doyle and uh, Lockyer don't think have made it with the uh, second uh, master. They have. They've Gra just come past. Week, have they? Good. They're out late then. 19 has not, unfortunately. 19 the uh, Gravit and Swig car. No. Is that Stuart Graham in there, is it? Looks like it probably is. And the question about when the pit stops are should be coming between 15 and 25 minutes. 15 and 25 minutes. 45 minute race, and that's yep. when the pit stop should be. You know, trying to pick up on these uh, on these drivers. That's uh, that's David Clark, isn't it? In there. Let's have a look. Looks yes, that's David Clark in uh, the 14 Bastos uh, Camaro on the front row. Let's see whether it is Garrett or Graham in there. That is uh, Nick Swift in the Mini number 60. Looking happy with life. Richard Longman car. Swift Tune leading uh, builder of these engines. There, number 10, uh, Bastos Vion car. Mines uh, and Huff in the car. That's Rob Huff. And uh, Richard Mines starts. And uh, Henry Hope Frost caught up with Nick Swift on the grid. Swifty, what can you do from here? Uh, I mean, first of all, how mad is this, sitting on the front row next to these big boys? So, all we can do, keep going forward, keep going flat out, and see what comes out of it. Let Andrew take over. He is a megastar, so it'll be really interesting. The best we can hope for is to get somewhere near a podium. You're a bit of a wizard in these things. Is he as quick as you? Oh, man, yeah, no, he's, he's faster than me, that's for sure. Very modest of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's I mean, tricky, isn't it? That the V8s have got the grunt down the straights, and you're all over them in the twisty bits. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, normal David and Goliath stuff. So we shall uh, be doing the best we can. Yesterday was an awesome race. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, fantastic. Let's hope for a repeat. Good luck. Give it large. Cheers, Henry. Number nine, I can see, is the orange crash helmet of uh, Tiffany Dell in uh, one of the Rovers, that's on row six. His father competed in the very first Goodwood members meeting in 49. The Gravit Swig uh, Dolomite Sprint is there on the back that of the grid. That must be Emanuele Piro looking in and closing the door on Phil Perryman in the BMW 530i, the UFO jeans car that starts in the middle of uh, row three. I th think it's the green helmet of Chris Snowden in the Alfa Romeo. There's drama on, the drama on the oh dear the dolly at the back. Oh, it did come round. That's it did 19. come round. The engine uh, cover it's, yep. up. It's gravit in it. 
Um, see that crash shall we? And yes, that Mazda did make it, I'm glad to say. It's okay, it's running, number 19. Eight looks like it is uh, looks like it's John Young gets with a gold stripe across his helmet. Um, next door to 26, we don't have the seven De Borman and Thibault car. Everyone else is uh, pretty much there. If you can pick up any of the drivers, uh, it would be uh, well, helpful. The key, the key one to try and pick up, of course, is the car leading around at the start. Is it Nigel Garrett or is it Stuart Graham? How do you want to play this one? I think it's Stuart Graham. What, even after he missed the pit stop window last year? Ha. <laughs> well, there's Steve Soper, so that answers that the question that. about the number eight car. Being manhandled by one. Rob Huff there on the pit. Well, good to see that sort of banter and mucking around, but the serious action will be out on the circuit. And, and Nick Swift always has a smile on his face, but he's so deadly serious. And his onboard camera footage uh, from yesterday's race was fantastic. Good news about oh, car number three is coming around on its own at the tail. Was that on the grid? Uh, that should have, been on, should have been on row two. Uh, I, think he might, and Pochio. I think he's rocketed ahead. Maybe he's got a problem. He wants to get back the grid, to the grid to have a quick fix, but um, they're running not in a regular order around the back of the circuit, that's for sure. Are they a long way clear? Uh, yeah, no, he's gone a long no, way he clear. Is. He's, he's sort of somewhere around Lavant, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Out of the corner of the uh, uh, in car camera shot here, riding with uh, Nick Swift. The Camaro's smoking already. We did that yesterday from time to time. I'm afraid I've been absolute rubbish at trying to work out who's in the car. It's not helped by the fact that almost all of them are right-hand drives, so the driver's on the far side from me, and uh, not easy to pick them all out. So we still don't know who's in the pole position starting Fabergé, Livery, Chevrolet, Camaro. I wonder whether Henry knows down uh, on the grid. He's walked among them, on the great and the good. We know that's David Clark uh, because we saw the uh, red and blue stripes on the side of his helmet. Matt Neal's helmet would be a little closer to the uh, roof of the car. It's, it's I yeah, it's for, uh, very, uh, very uh, Olivier Panis, that helmet of David Clark's. Is it Garrett or is it. It's largely white Stuart helmet, Graham, you can see, Yeah, and a, and a black overalls. But Stuart Graham certainly wears black overalls. Well, what's happening with Pochol up on the grid? He rocketed round to park in yeah, the fifth place, but Pochol, um, an ASEAN car. Yeah. Oh, but your house captain, an ASEAN. I wonder who it is in that. It is Snowden in the Alfa Romeo. It is Stuart Graham in the Thank pole you. car. Thank you very much. Um, it's uh, brindled by the looks of things in the number 12 rover. It's a white helmet as opposed to a blue one. 21 is uh, the is uh, is Spurrell in the uh, ICS car. Looks like uh, Jim Morris in the 44. The gravit swig dolomite is oh, boiling yeah. already. Well, this Jerry Marshall trophy race is going to be underway any second. Away they go. And one or two cars slowly away. One of the uh, Rovers very slow away in the middle of the pack. But it's David Clark who reaches uh, Patrick first. The uh, Clement uh, Escort is on the grass on the inside. And is still on the grass. But look who's popped into second place. Oh. Though, the little mini with Nick Swift. He knew he had to make his move early on. He's being monstered now around the outside by uh, Stuart Graham who powers the second of the Camaros past him so the Mini had his tiny moment of glory but he'll pick them up again when they get down to St Mary's yes and he won't even bother to slow down will he doesn't doesn't break to lap four he said Stuart Graham taking a look down the inside of David Clark quite can't quite can't manage it and uh, it's the two Camaros nose to tail the front one number 14 the Bastos livery car smoking away uh, gaining on both of them as they go through the dip after St Mary's that little Mini with naughty Nick Swift looking to the outside line Go for the inside line though, and to take the lead is Stuart Graham. Down the inside, it's 11 then, Stuart Graham. Leads already, but oh, 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 the Camaro chops back across in front of the Mini. Bolts away down the 11 straight through the little kink. And uh, there's the chasing pack, and what a pack that is. 3 litre V6 Capris, we've got uh, V8 Rovers uh, in there among them. The two V8s uh, out front though. The Fabergé Route 33 car, a uh, tribute car to the uh, Stuart Graham car of 1974. And uh, behind is the Bastos car. 
one of the Rovers, that's uh, Tiffany Dell, I think, barreling his way out through uh, a few places there. Oh, slight contact between uh, the Triple X Dolomite Sprint and the following Capri. Number 11, Capri, the VP livery one, starting down towards the tail. That's the, that's the Mackay Shedden car. Something's smoking speaking, really oh, badly. That's oh, the, that's the Callum Lockie uh, Doyle Mazda that had problems yesterday, and that should be pulling off shortly. That's unfortunate. So, one of the key ingredients this race. It's not going to last long, is it? Tiffany Delk out the inside of the Bastos Capri, taking other place. First three cars pulling well clear. They're about five car lengths apart, each of them, from each other, but really starting to smoke quite heavily now is that Bastos number 14, Cabarro. And Nick Swift will see that as motivation as he closes in. And then in fourth place, you have to look back to Paul Pocchiol's number three Capri, followed by the nine uh, Rover as they go through St Mary's. Then it's literally nose to tail for the next 20 cars. What magnificent touring car action. And here comes the Mini up into second place. Can he make it stick? On the exit, he won't be able to. No. <laughs> Nick Swift shaking his fist uh, to David Clark. Perryman is uh, fifth in the BMW. And then uh, the Mines uh, Capri, number 10, is in sixth place. Nidell was seventh across the line first time through. Did one Grand Prix, the Belgian Grand Prix, in uh, an ensign. I can smell that Mazda having passed the commentary box at St Mary's and nose full of very hot oil smell. Leaders through. Nidell is up to fourth place in uh, Mallet's Rover. Then it's the Pochol Manassian car, three. 25 is uh, Perryman. Behind Perryman is the 15 Fowler Margulies car. Isn't it great though to see these battles again? The BMWs, the Rovers, the Ford Capris, and of course out front those mighty, mighty Camaros. This time around Nick Swift is way back off the tail. And you know what, the oil smoke, or the smoke smoke, we don't know which sort of smoke it is, from number 14 in second place has ceased. Sometimes yep. a good thing, but often, as you say, Marcus, not a good thing. Bumpers adrift on the uh, the Pochol Manassian uh, Esso uh, Capri. It's not the danger to anyone, just flapping around a bit out back. Dr. Mass has joined us in the commentary box with Doug Nye. So working on this one here, it's... Uh, Graham out front, new fastest lap, and uh, let's uh, pick up on this. Perriman coming back at the Pocho uh, Manassia Capri with the BMW, V6 Capri, straight six BMW, another, another SO Capri is in the mix as well, down to the chicane. Then we've got uh, stealthily making its way through the field, the Patrick Motor uh, Rover, which is the Harris and Ward car. Last time through was up into 10th place. Fastest lap of the race set by Tiffany Dell last time around in 4th place. No wonder he's made such good progress in the number 9 Rover. Yeah, three laps in. And in fact, Nidell is starting to haul in Nick Swift's Mini as they come down. Another puff of smoke from the number 14 Camaro in second place. Nick Swift closing in slightly and then catching both of them is Tiffany Dell in the Daily Express Rover. There's a battle of the Rovers, the Welby Rover on the outside. Coming through on the inside is the uh, Ward and Harris uh, Rover, the Patrick Motor Group car that started well, well back uh, on the ninth row of the grid. Now the number 15 Capri in your shot has just won the battle for the two SO livery cars, but if you look at the tail, some of its rear bumper is hanging off. They've worked their way past Phil Perry yeah. BMW, and uh, you'll see it if you look at the front of the shot. Yes, hanging off the number 15 Capri, now up into fifth place. Looking quite menacing is that uh, Rover, uh, the um, Harris and Ward car. Number, ten, uh, number six running in tenth place. This is the battle for third place, and Tiffany Dell closing, as you say, Bruce, on the third place mini of Nick Swift tripping over my microphone lead excitement here there's uh, riding on board with uh, Nick Swift 
Another new fastest lap there, under one minute 30 for Tiffany Dell. Absolutely flying, 0.7 of a second down on the character. You can see on the big screen, that's Nick Swift, and he really is a big character in a small car. Holding down third place, but for how much longer? That Daily Express Rover is getting closer and closer and closer. In fact, and has gone past on the, on the drop down from Ford Ward, and now he's going to have a big slide. They're both catching the increasingly smoky number 14, Bastos uh, Camaro, but uh, fighting back through out of St Mary's is the little mini pushing the big, big rover. He'll no doubt, whether he's serious or not, have a little look down the inside at Lavin. No, he's trying to be really serious this time. Await his moment, carry as much momentum as he can, not compromise. He doesn't have horsepower to give away. Keeping the momentum through the first part of the lap and the second, they're going to be closing in on that Pastos Camaro very soon indeed. Nidell might even get him on the next time around. Yeah, Nidell, uh, that lap round, another uh, fastest lap, and uh, that's down in the 129s, 129 for him. Coming back at the Camaro. It is smoky again, that Chevy. And meanwhile, scarpering out front is the number one Camaro, the brute car of uh, Stuart Graham. It's V8s one, two, and three now. Swift in fourth place in number 60. Then we've got uh, a superb battle with these two SO, uh, SO Capris. The Fowler Mark Earlies car and the uh, Pochol Manassian car absolutely together, being uh, just holding off Perriman's BMW and the Harris Ward Rover. That's, and those four that's cars the fast together. one in the group. Oh, oh, oh a big spin, the touch, I think, and uh, round they go. David Clark goes round at the kink before you, Bruce. He did, and then as the tyre smoke just cleared enough, popping through it was the little mini with Nick Swift. So he's in third. I wonder if that's been leaking on and it went onto the it rear tyre well and they eventually made him spin. So, yep. big moment there. Yeah, for there may Clark. have been the slightest of brushes, but uh, on the other hand, you probably did right with that. It's uh, got that um, side exiting exhaust just ahead of the rear wheels, but it's been smoking pretty badly uh, through much of the race. And that's uh, changed the order again. Uh, Nidell then uh, is up into second place. Third is Swift in the Mini. And they've got a Bastos... Uh, Capri uh, rubbing its uh, rear bumper off against the side of the BMW 530. The Mazda is boring its way through the inside. The rotary uh, sports car up the inside. That's been going very well. And uh, Perryman, Phil Perryman in the UFO Jeans 530 is gradually being picked off. He's had three cars go past him in the last couple of laps. So perhaps his tyres feeling a little worn. Maybe it was just the pressure of having the... Uh, the Patrick Motorsport Group uh, Rover hoving into view and then passing him and now putting huge pressure on the leader of the Ford Capri pack. Paolo Margulies and look at the oh, UFO jeans uh, BMW just mentioned it, he flouts the chicane. Kicks up the fiber, last fiber there. Now the 17 Mazda picking off the second of the uh, SO Capris as the order keeps on changing in that battle behind the lead. Bruce, the race leader, though, seven seconds clear. Bruce, we've jo got Jochen with us. Jochen, do you wish you were out there with these guys? Yes, it would be very nice, of course, but unfortunately my wrist is not quite up to it. It hurts a little to watch him see replay. Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> very good recovery, actually. He did well. It looked to me as if the smoke from the Camaro is more from the differential than the exhaust. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, I think. No, he's still going yeah. well. Coming back to Nick Swift and the Mini. What's the gap between uh, Tiff and Stuart Graham? It's 7.3 seconds. That Mazda is going well, isn't it? Uh, but smoking. Does, doesn't seem to slow it down. No, that's the Watson Ian Cowley car, number 17. It's been working its way through that very, very tight pack, so I guess it has a lot more speed than it's actually showing, but he's done the hard work in getting through. But at the moment, it's uh, the Graham Garrett uh, Cabarro leading Stuart Graham at the wheel. Then gap gap then still seven down. seconds. Seven seconds, Nick Swift still holding down third place in the little uh, mini, but Clark starting to close in again after that spin, after a little touch from Tiffany Dell just before they got to St Mary's a couple of laps ago.
Stuart Graham, as we said, seven and a half seconds clear, looking very comfortable in the lead of the race. He's at the tip after St Mary's, and only now is Tiffany Dell rounding the apex of the corner beneath my commentary box in a second place in the number nine rover. Oh, Capri going Dr. wide. Dr Mackay, he's been putting, hanging the tail out. Yes, it is the number 11 Ford uh, Capri. He's been on the edge of the grass, or just slightly over quite a few times in the heat of battle. Or is it Gordon Shedden? We didn't establish who started that car. Is it three minutes till the pit window opens? Uh, uh, no, it's, uh, it's actually uh, just over half a minute until the pit window opens. Between 15 and 25 minutes. And now the number 10 Capri getting uh, in on the action, rubbing the tail of the 15 Capri that already has the rear bumper hanging slightly adrift. Emmanuel waiting to take over the uh, BMW. Oh, and now oh. a near spin after a very close contact with the number 10. And there's the Bastos Capri has now got past Capri, Camaro, I beg your pardon, has now got past Nick Swift. They're using all the grunt down the straight as they went towards the end of the lap. Nick Swift is going to have to try and hang on, but look at the speed difference. If you look forward, if you look at the big screen, of the acceleration of that big 7.4 litre powered uh, Chevrolet Camaro, leaving the Mini in its way. Three litre six under battle between the gaggle of Capris and the BMW. Well, that number 10, uh, Bastos Capri, has really, with uh, Richard Mines on board, has been picking his way through that very tight pack. And a bit like the 17 uh, Mazda RX-7, if they can get clear track, they certainly have the speed. And another place gained by the Bastos Capri there. Well, we've got one car, one of the uh, Rovers in the pits, number 12. Now look, the Camaro and the Mini, they seem to be drawn to each other. Last time around, the sheer grunt of the Camaro put him back into third place, but Nick Swift through the slower corners around the back of the circuit, fancies a go. The Bastos Camaro goes a little wide, he'll be accelerating faster than the Mini, but the Mini is pushing him wide, taking the inside line, one hand on the wheel, the other for the uh, Italian-style driving that works so well for so many people, but Nick Swift always entertaining. He should never not have a camera in his car. Coming, to, coming down towards uh, one third distance, the uh, lead Camaro charges through again in the hands of Stuart Graham, an absolute master of these cars. Tiffany Dell uh, giving chase, he's 5.7 seconds adrift. Well, he's, he's gained two seconds in two laps and he's chasing the race leader. Yeah, he is, he's uh, closing in well. The window um, is not open yet, I'm not quite sure why I that uh, I think must it's be an unscheduled stop. I think it's a minute to go, isn't it? I tell you what, I looked at the time, 14.55, I thought that was 14 minutes, 55 seconds, it was uh, 2 o'clock and 55, I, I think. I think in one. half a minute we've got the pit, pit seconds, window yeah. opening. Well, we have one of the rovers in already, so that must be an unscheduled stop uh, for that car, which was the... Uh, the here Brindle comes the Bastos yeah. Capri into the pit, so... Bastos is Capri in, that's... It uh, might have bodywork damage, that's, that's been in the walls a little. Yes. Right, Nick Swift making another move out of St Mary's on, on the, the, the Clark Camaro, the Bastos red and white Camaro, number 14, raced in period by Luigi, racing and really, really pushing it hard. We've seen this time and again, the Bastos Camaro goes wide, and the nimble little 1275 GT Mini, number 60, goes up the inside, but then it comes to time to put the hammer down, and there's far more power under the right foot of David Clark, back into third place he goes. I guess Nigel Garrett would be happy to let Stewart stay out as long as possible. Uh, you'd have to think so, sitting on that lead. 5.7 seconds clear last time around of Tiffany Dell's Rover, that's the number nine Rover. Looks as though it should be fairly similar this time around. Yep, the uh, pit window now is open. I think the Bastos Capri is coming in. I just saw arm raised by uh, David Clark. Was that being kind? Yes, it was. Into the pits. He's read the situation well. So he's going to give the lion's share of the driving uh, to his own teammate. We'll take over the 14, which is Matt Neal. No shabby cycle. Yes, we're going to go. Big tall Matt Neal. David Clark about to uh, leap in. Squeezed in. Helped by a... Mc Mechanic to fix the seat belts, and then David Clark lends that's a hand. Let's put the Harris Ward Rover number six up into fourth place. The uh, Watts Cowley Mazda uh, up into fifth place. Then 15, 11, and three. The Priest 15, 11, uh, and three, all of them. And then uh, Perriman in the 530 BMW is ninth. Number 25, tenth is the Scarborough and Kai car. 
number four. It's the other Swift Tune Mini in. The Gordon Shatton uh, Capri has climbed well up the order from his uh, ninth row on the grid, starting position. That was the Plato Swift uh, Mini in. Here's Stuart Graham, yet to stop, of course. Doesn't have to stop for a few minutes yet. His pit crew will be determined not to make the same mistake as last year. I'm just wondering if number 10, the Bastos Capri, Richard Vines, Rob Huffcar, came in marginally seconds it, before the uh, pit window opened. Uh, towards it, a minute, I would say. It did. Now, Tiffany Dell continues to make inroads into Stuart Graham's lead. It's 4.7 seconds now, as opposed to the 5.7 it was uh, a while ago. Uh, third is still Swift. Uh, fourth and fifth were coming up together, and the, uh, the Patrick Motors uh, rover is in, so that's the Watts Cowley Mazda up into fourth place. That stayed out. Um, it was Chris Harris out of the rover, so uh, uh, Ward going in. Good opening stint from uh, Chris Harris. A couple of Dolomites in that uh, mix as well. And running seamlessly in the front. The gap has come down 4.8 seconds now, the gap between uh, Stuart Graham in the race and leading Fabergé Racing Camaro and Tiffany Dell in the chasing number yeah. nine Rover. Number 14, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, former BTC uh, champion uh, Matt Neal in the Bastos Camaro. Number 14 running in 16th place. I wonder if Phil Perriman will pretty soon hand over to Emanuele in the BMW. Hasn't come in yet. Still caught up in a Capri sandwich. Well, a lot of this is about track position too, where you're going to pop out. And uh, Matt Neal in the Bastos Camaro has quite a lot of free track ahead of him, but he'll be hoping the batch that he will catch is about five or six cars, Capri's, BMW's, I think probably an RX-7, go into the pits very shortly, otherwise he'll be on their tail and then they'll start delaying him. In has come the uh, Opal of uh, Martin Sporrell. Stuart Hall to go out in that one. Oh, that uh, father Pete drove in period. Here comes a gang of cars through the chicane, including the BMW. 2-1 Capri peeling off into the pit lane. That's the number three car. And if you get a long shot at the back of that grouping, you'll see Matt Neal in the Camaro. You can see in the background there, he wants these cars to make a pit stop the next time around to get out of his way, because of course he is battling in reality with the Swift Jordan Mini, but that has yet to stop in third place. Steve Soper getting aboard the Autocar uh, Capri and John Young climbing out. That has ridden up the order, was right down near the tail, worked pretty well there. Another lap by Stuart Graham stays out. Tiff Nidell is uh, still, well, we'll see, four or so seconds behind. 14 McNeil of the Camaro, the Bastos car, the red and white one, is uh, up to 14th, best of the stoppers. Yeah, but you know what, Marcus, he's now caught the tail of that group of Capris and sundry midfield runners, and he's going to start being delayed unless he can get them where he wants. Nick Swift waiting for a pit stop board, he'd like to come in, or would he? He's, no, he's, is he, got a, is he, is he struggling with the gear change? I think he is. Out comes uh, Steve Soper in the auto car Capri number eight. The, the Watts Cowley Mazda stays out in uh, fourth place. 4.4 seconds now uh, between one Stuart Graham and nine Tiffany Dell. Well, Andrew Jordan looks happy enough. He's waiting to take over from Nick Swift. The message hasn't got through to him that all may not be right in the cockpit of Mini number 60. The BMW in fact, that's touching the 63 sister car with his father Glenn Swift on board. Perriman brings the BMW in. Emmanuel Piro will jump in. As does the Alpha. That's Chris Snowden driving it at the moment. So uh, straight six BMW, Emanuele Piro leaping in. And V6 Alfa Romeo, which Nick Whale will uh, take over. Right, this is probably 
nearly 24 minutes gone. They have to pit between 15 and 25. Now, dicing with the, the clock again, as it was last year. We have our race leader, the Fabergé Racing Camaro. This could be another story that we don't want to have this year. There yeah. are two 20, 25, uh, 25 implies that they've got to stop uh, before 20 minutes to go, doesn't it? So, so three and a half minutes still for uh, that lead Camaro to stop. So probably the end of this lap, Stuart. Will Swift will in, Swift is in. in. Andrew Jordan waiting to take the uh, car over. Out he goes. He's uh, not told him there's a problem with the gear change, if there is one, so I assume there isn't. He's left out, he's going round to uh, usher him back into the fray as soon as possible. <coughs> Do we see H Henry Hopeross lingering in the background? Probably hoping Lurking to... Lurking and lingering. Hoping to grab a word with Nick. Out goes uh, Jordan. So Andrew Neal in, in the Camaro. Slices in front of one Dolomite sprinter and Madgwick. Yes, but Chris, the most important thing there. Oh, big smoke, and we've had a, a clash of a Capri and a Dolomite, a triplex Dolomite number 22 down at Madgwick. But the important thing is that the Swift Mini got back out ahead of the Camaro, the Bastos Camaro, yet it was behind it on the circuit before the pit stop. So good job done there by Nick Swift and new driver Andrew Jordan. Stuart Graham has stayed out with two minutes and ten seconds to go, so he he's got to come in this time. Got to come in this time. Stuart, please don't uh, do what happened last year. Mind you, equally so has Tiff got to come in. And Tiff had quite a sideways moment coming out of the chicane last time around, so he's really pressing on. 5.3 seconds down is Nidell in the number nine rover. Yeah, the SO Capri is um, say off the circuit as well after the incident up at, uh, I think that's Madrick. It is Madrick, yes indeed. There's Tiff. Trying to find a way past the uh, BW Golf GTI, the lone, of that, the lone version of that. The master of uh, Watts he is in third place at the moment. That uh, has yet to stop. So we expect the top four, and Gordon Shedden uh, in number 11. None of those top four have stopped. We're down to basically a minute to go uh, before they have to, before the end of the pit window. Uh, we've got a safety car coming out. Now, that... That might is slow them down sufficiently to mean they don't make it. Uh, oh, they're oh, the pit. oh no, they stayed, stayed out. Stuart Graham stayed out. Well, we have 40 seconds to go until the window closes, well, but he's not going to do a lap. In and uh, Tiff's out as well. Tip, the pit window closed. Safety car. Nidell's missed it as well. Um, the Watts Cowley Mazda, where is that? Is the Mazda in the pits? Our first four cars, none of them have come in yet to... So, a perplexed air for some of the drivers down there. The safety car is out for that... Uh, a couple of cars to be cleared up just off the racing line at Madrid. The, seven, the, the 17 Mazda, um, that uh, hasn't stopped either. So the top three cars, uh, and the, in fact the Shedden Mackay Capri as well, all of them have missed the opportunity to Marcus, stop. Marcus, is the pit lane entry closed under the safety car? It said on the, uh, on the screen, came up. Um, safety car, pits closed, pits uh, window closed. The board, is, uh, Bruce, the board is being held up. We can see open on this side, so I guess it's closed on the other side. But maybe they're gambling that... What's the penalty for missing the pit window? Is it ten, well, ten they've, got, they've got to stop whatever happens. That's, going to, mean, that's going to mean that um, uh, Nick Swift and Andrew Jordan... Are leading the race. Are leading the race. Uh, of course, they got the jump on the uh, Bastos Camaro. Only by a fraction from the Reed Morley uh, Dolomite number 20, which has yet to stop. Yes, in terms of those who stopped, it's uh, Andrew Jordan leading, effectively, 
uh, in number 60 Mini. Second place is Matt Neal in the 14 Bastos Camaro. And third place is Chris Ward in the number 6 Rover. But Bruce, when the guys come in who've missed the pit window, are they then held for 10 seconds or so? You look out of your window they've got with the stopwatch. They've, they've, they've got to change, got to. They've they've got to change, change drivers. They've got to change drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. The roll of the dice. So number 11 being driven with great vim and vigour by uh, Gordon Shedden, Do touring car champion. But he has uh, a new mountain to climb. In fact, he doesn't. He's handing over to his teammate, Duncan Mackay, shortly. Why is the safety car out? Because the car, the, one of the Esso Capri's... two cars, the Esso uh, Capri and one of the Triplex Dolomites, are collided done. at Madgwick. And the Everyman uh, Land Rover goes out. Local institution, everyone's, everyone's garage, just down on the old uh, A27 outside Chai. And they're still going round. And they're all looking, oh, Tiff's looking out of the window saying, what's going on here? You know, I've absolutely no idea. Um, the number two, uh, Rawdon Welby um, Rover has come in. This is most bizarre, isn't it? Now the Mini is there of Andrew Jordan. Two places behind is Matt Neal in the second of the cars to which have stopped. And third of the cars to have stopped will be the Patrick Motor Group number six rover in the hands of Chris Ward. Now Chris Harris started it, Chris Ward is now in it. Those are going to be the top three uh, of those who have towed the line of the pit window. Fourth of the stoppers will be the Mines and Rob Huff, Bastos Capri, number 10. So uh, Rob Huff will be in fourth place, then the Pochel Manassian car, Manassian now aboard that one. Uh, Puro in the BMW will be, what, sixth of the stoppers. Um, and then the Swift Plato, uh, John Mowat, Billy John Mowat, the race that current period has been here this weekend, probably still is. So, it's all um, most bizarre. There's still time of plenty for changes of the order, but with uh, 16 and a half minutes or so remaining in this race, you have to say that the, the Swift Jordan Mini, the Bastos uh, Camaro, and the Patrick Motorsport, uh, sorry, the Daily X, no, the Patrick Motorsport um, Rover. Rover have got an absolutely huge advantage. Debating whether there will be an additional penalty for missing the uh, the pit window. They're all standing there looking a bit worried and pensive <laughs> in the uh, pit lane. I don't think if the pit if the pit lane was closed, there's nothing they can do about it. They'll just have to come and make pit their pit stop. Pit lane closed. So that's it. Yeah, but there must be Bruce a penalty for missing it, which means I think an extra few seconds to stop. They can't come in at the moment because the board is being actually held up. Pit window closed. So they can't come in. This is a, an action replay of last year's uh, dramas. What must Stuart Graham be thinking? <laughs> oh, dearie <laughs> me. That's probably what Nigel, Nigel Garrett's thinking, to be honest, because um, they didn't necessarily have it in the bag, but uh, with the best will in the world, Nigel Garrett's been going very quickly in the Camaro, and um, Peter Mallett. Uh, was going to take over from Nidell. Let's, uh, let's hear now from uh, Nick Swift for that stellar first stint in the mini. Swifty, it's all kicking off with pit stop windows. Absolutely, this is, could be really exciting. Um, uh, obviously, you can't come in while the safety car's out. The pit lane is closed. Uh, the lead Camaro hasn't been in the pits as yet, so is he going to make it into the pit window? It seems unthinkable to me that the Graham... Um, uh, Camaro, yes, thank you. Um, it will do that again. It's two years on the trot. Exactly, two years on the trot. So, you know, let's see. I don't know quite what's going to happen at the end. Uh, we've got our fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything else crossed. See if we can try and get on that podium. Uh, how was your first stint? Uh, wild. <laughs> wild. <laughs> That's great on board, actually, of you. Oh, it, it's awesome. I love it. it. There is just so much fun out there. It is fantastic. Hopefully we'll talk again in a few minutes in part for me. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, Henry. 
Well, you heard it there for, uh, from, from Nick Swift, but indeed it's the first four cars. The first four cars won the Fabergé Camaro, nine the uh, Daily Express Rover, that's uh, Stuart Graham, Tiffany Dell, 17 Patrick Watts in the Mazda, and 11 Gordon Shedden in the Capri. And they're still trying to hook these uh, cars up. As far as the 15 uh, Capri that's uh, off up there, the Fowler Margulis car, the... Um, and the longer the delay, the, the less time that the tr cars who haven't pitted have to try and make up what has been undone for them. Absolutely, and the less time that uh, Andrew Jordan has to try to hold on to what could be an extremely tenuous lead. Now, there won't be, um, it, it won't be this lap that the, um, they can do anything about it because the lights are still on on the, uh, on the Porsche and the Chevy Camaro rumbles on past the pits. They still haven't hooked up those cars at uh, Magwick Corner. It's also another lap in which their tyre temperatures continue to drop, so the restart yep. could be very dynamic. Absolutely. And I'd say that would favour the Mini. Very definitely so, yes. It would not be a, a great issue for them. So the cars may be going slowly behind the safety car, but drama are plenty, and it's not over yet. The lights are now off on the roof of the safety car, yep. which by my book means it should be coming in this time around. The car behind it is the race leader, but for how much longer? That's Stuart Graham still on board. The uh, Fabergé Racing Camaro has to hand it over to Nigel Garrett, and uh, how many cars further back do we have? What will be the real race leader, the first of the cars that has pitted it should be the Nick Swift Mini that was handed over, the number 60 to teammate Andrew Jordan, some way back in the pack, about 15 cars further back, but he's made the pit stop, done the driver change. And the Porsche is going to peel off into that slot of the chicane, so uh, at that point uh, the signal will be for the Mini to, uh, to scarper if it can, but of course it's mired in the pack. It's a long way back, yeah. there's only one car between the Mini and the car that's closest to it in a race order, which is the Bastos uh, Camaro that has uh, Matt Neal on board, so will he'll get the, straight onto its tail. Will the pit window open as soon as the safety car pulls off, or will they I have to do another lap? No, I presume they can come in. I presume it will open at that point. It's uh, freed up the circuit, it'll green the circuit, and... Uh, Here we go. No, that's it's not coming it's in. Stuart's staying out. How utterly bizarre. The Leicester is still a, there's still a sign there, isn't there? there we is. can't see at the there end of the pit. There, um, there which is. Which may suggest that the window is closed and. Well, it's truly closed, yes. Well, 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 that removed a whole heap of runners. Four, the front four cars have not pitted anyhow. They carry on racing as though there is no tomorrow. They've got to make whatever ground up that they can. Stuart Graham still leading the Bastos Capri. He's moved up a few places and uh, really wriggling around on the track. But uh, Stuart Graham flaming in that Camaro as he goes around St Mary's. The number nine Rover, Tiffany Dell, just one car away from his tail. But the key is where is Nick, uh, is Andrew Jordan in, in the, he's been passed already by Matt Neal before they got down as far as St Mary's. So maybe at Fordwater the power of the Camaro came into play. That is really looking effectively like the race lead, the Luigi uh, run in day. Yeah, but Bastos uh, Camaro there. Yeah, but they're also the Rover is right with them. This is the top three. We've got uh, Neil uh, leading the real race for those who've stopped in the Camaro. The Mini's next and the Rover is uh, gobbling the Mini up. The Blue Rover with the um, yellow bumper. You pick that up in a minute. A big, big exuberant slide from the chicane from Tiffany Dell. And Rob Huff getting very, very sideways. Stuart, between the Stuart Graham is coming, coming, in. coming in. And uh, Tiff's coming in as well. The Mazda from uh, third place, Patrick Watts is in, and Sheds is in from fourth, so that frees, it's Matt Neal, and now um, Matt Neal leads in 14 in reality, second now is Chris Ward in the Patrick Motor Group rover that's had problems all weekend. Uh, 
And then uh, the Jordan Mini is third of those cars which stopped at the regular time. Stuart Graham is out. Is uh, uh, yeah, Garrett, Garrett, Garrett getting in? The number six is um, going to be in second place. It's 14 from six from 60. There's Tiff. Right, I think the story of the remainder of the race will be can Matt Neal hang on or will Chris Ward close down on him in that rover? Looks as though Andrew Jordan's taking a few laps to get up to speed in the Mini and he's dropping off the tail. Also, it does make sense that he didn't let them come in on the first lap because if the, re the cars were accelerating for the restart out of the chicane, you didn't want half the pack at the head of the group peeling into the pit lane and going more slowly. So I guess that is a sensible decision, yeah. but out comes the rover, the Capri. Yeah. And at the back of the group, after a slower pit stop, Nigel Garrett was leading in the hands of Stuart Graham, but now right back down the road. <laughs> Tiff explaining everything. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> wasn't me, honest. <laughs> so just to refresh people's memories, we've got Matt Neal leading in the uh, Bastos Camaro. Second place, Chris Ward in the number six uh, Rover. Third place, Andrew Jordan in the number 60 Mini. And there is Chris Ward in the blue Rover getting closer and closer. What's the gap? 1.3 seconds between he and race leader. Uh, Matt Neal in that number 14 Camaro. Ooh, Chris Ward using all the circuit and a little bit of the grass as well as he uh, tries to eke any advantage he can as he chases down the Camaro at the lead of the race. They've got back markers to get past, no problem at all on the run down the hill past the other Swift Tune Mini. Uh, and get puts it between he and the chasing rover as they go through the kink before St Mary. The little mini tries almost to attack back on the inside as they go to St Mary's, loses a bit of ground and Chris Ward gaining on the two of them, but now he's got the mini in his way as he goes into the dip after St Mary's. He's going to go up the inside. Oh, let's hear from Tiffany Dell down in the pits with Henry. Tiff, um, crikey O'Reilly. I think I was born in the wrong age. I think rear-wheel drive, powerful cars with no aero is, is me, and I just love Goodwood. And uh, great charge from you up through the pack. Poor old Peasy, he had trouble with the gear linkage. So he's running about fifth or sixth. We dropped to 15. So I thought I might get up to about fifth. But when I got to fourth in about two laps, I thought we'll have a bit of more of this. And uh, the safety car, did that kind of spoil well, it for you? It's completely ruined the whole yeah. plan. Yeah, because you know, I was just building as big a lead as I could for Peter to go out, and uh, unfortunately the pace car just. Were you aware of where the window was? Yeah. We were just running right to the end of the window, and that was, you know, I think it was only about two minutes before. There was 40 seconds left when the safety car came out. 40 seconds left, so I should have come in before. Possibly. A, a bit of confusion, I think. Anyway, good fun. Good. I had a huge fun, as always, a good one. Well done. Thanks, Dave. This face always speaks more, more than a thousand words, doesn't it, with the gesticulations thrown in, just the enthusiasm bubbling out of every pore. Eight and three quarter minutes to go, and Chris Ward has clear sight of Matt Neal, our race leader. 23 laps into this race, they've both done personal best for their cars, both in the 29s last time round. You'd have to say that Chris Ward has possibly the better chance, but it's a very big, wide Camaro who's got to work his way past. And Matt Neal, no stranger to, to being able to make his car even wider in his quest for victory. He's learned that craft over 20-odd years in the British Touring Car Championship. Leading, holding sway at the moment in that 14 Camaro, the Bastos livery car coming down to Woodcut one more time to complete their 24th lap. The Reed Morley uh, Dolomite uh, 20 and... Uh it is up into fourth. That was another of the late stoppers. Uh, Graham and Garrett, number one. Nigel Garrett is in fifth place. And then Mallet in the Rover. So the gap was 1.3 seconds between Matt Neal and Chris Ward last time around. It should be slightly more, just under 1.5 seconds this time around. But only one car between them. That is the key. This battle will ebb and flow according to where they hit back markers. But I think actually that should be the last one they meet for some while. Yes, they've got that uh, SO uh, Capri between them. That's the Pochiol Manassian car, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it's actually looking pretty quick, the Capri between them, as it comes down the little slope from uh, Fordwater, not really losing any it's ground. Got, Chris uh, Ward Nick hardly gave it. Nick think. Manassian, well, he's going for house points. Do house captains score double? I don't know. But the number three Capri will slide just to one side, and I think the number six Rover will go back through 
passed it into second place. It is in second place, but he's now been delayed. He didn't want to have to go around the outside at Lavin. So advantage swings the way with just under seven minutes remaining as the Bastos, Bastos Capri, Capri, that's the Mines Huff car, yeah. pulls off. And now losing ground, and he won't be happy about this at all, having to go the long way around the Capri as Matt Neal escapes in the Camaro. Chris Ward will be fuming in that big number six rover. Yes, it's taken him a long time, and Mercian is not going to give up that surface. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Beautiful dive inside into uh, Wukud, a lovely uh, reflex court slide on the outside for Chris Ward, but uh, that has delayed him. It was 1.48 before, the gap between uh, 14 and seconds, 6. I reckon. 2.4, last two second. Four. In fact, 0.6 of a second added. Uh, in third place will be the number 60 minute. There it goes through with Andrew Jordan. Having a lonely race after all the activity it had in yeah, the first half. Exactly. And the uh, Chevy Camaro, number one, uh, the brute car, Nigel Garrett, should be up into fourth place now. Right, let's see how Andrew Jordan's getting on. We say he's third in the race, he doesn't have many people ahead of him, but let's see the cornering angle. If you look at the big screens, riding on board with the car started, the little 60 mini started. But, oh, oh, the number one Camaro off the circuit. It doesn't have a mechanical problem. It was just a moment there for Nigel Garrett. Took over, so it's not their day. Stuart Graham, of course, caught out by that safety car, had been leading, and now any vestige of hope of a miracle is finished. Bastos, Camaro, number 14, red and white, big, famous, historic livery, so famous in the uh, Spa 24 Hours, where the, the Belgian cigarette giants Basta and Bastos and Belga used to fight, covering many, many cars in the fabulous Spa 24 Hours. It's still leading, there's a little Mazda RX-7 behind it, but closing in again is Chris Ward in the number six Rover, getting closer and closer one more time, but the clock is ticking away. <clears throat> that excursion didn't cost Nigel Garrett fourth place. No, but it cost them probably a lot of 12 time. seconds, something yeah. like that. Down into the last four minutes, with about. Uh, we're going to get, what, three laps more out of this, not this, and two more, I guess. Yeah, Chris Ward took more than half a second out of that lead, but the clock is ticking down far faster than he'd have liked as uh, he gives chase yet again coming down. The hill out of Boardwater towards St Mary's. The Camaro is through the kink before St Mary's. There's a Dolomite in between. That's the number, tw number 20 triplex car run by uh, Anthony Reid and Tim Morley that uh, was holding down fifth place and still is. Yeah, that was a late stopper as well, uh, Bruce. Fastest lap still to uh, Tiff in the number nine car. Thirty-three Hermitite uh, Dolomite with uh, a pretty grim misfire going past us. And the Dollies uh, on the tail of Matt Neal. Neal in the Bastos Camaro, started by David Clark, its owner. Yeah, the traffic is just going against Chris Ward at the moment. There's those two cars ahead of him, the, tri the Triumph Dolomite and the other Rover rather hampering his progress through the chicane. He still hasn't gone past the Dolomite, he's passed the other rover, the Daily Express car, that ran very well in the early stages of the race with uh, Tiffany Dell on board, uh, but that has, will now be dispatched, but uh, we have only three minutes precisely until the chequered flag comes out. Currently, of course, the leader's lapping uh, in 130s. Uh, it's going to be touch and go. They might uh, have to run one extra lap. They continue at uh, this pace. Almost to the second, yeah. I think. So that would be to the advantage of Chris Ward, not to the advantage of race leader Matt Neal. He would like to be able yes. to back off that little bit. 2.7 second clear, but no cars between them. Now Chris Ward has clear sight of the race leader. Manassian running in sixth in number three. The order is 14, 6 and 60. One, nine, and three, the uh, the top six at the moment. On the uh, straight through the kink, and that's Minassian coming past 
uh, Peter Mellon. That's a change of position. Nick Manassian in three, up into fifth place. Nick Manassian up into fifth place. Now your job, Marcus and Chris, is to work out exactly how much time is left on the clock when Matt Neal finishes the lap he is completing right now. <coughs> No, we've got two more laps. It's one minute, uh, one minute forty plus to go. So we said it would favour Chris Ward. He's got one more lap in which to chase after Matt Neal. Matt Neal holding on in the Camaro number fourteen that was started by David Clark. Did that very good stint when it was fighting against Nick Swift's Mini by and large, and uh, still yeah. leading the race. And Ward was mired in traffic on that lap. Has uh, gone out uh, from one point seven to three point four seconds over the last couple of laps. So coming through the kink before St Mary's, still smoking away as it was for the outset of the race. The number 14 Camaro, one minute still on the clock, so he's got to complete this lap and do one more. 3.4 seconds clear, as you said, Marcus, but Neil had clear track ahead of him. He's just set the fastest first sector of anybody, so he's pressing on very hard at the end of this race, desperate for victory. Plenty of smoke still from the big Chevy, and the Rover's not far behind. Not close enough to make an attack, though. No. He can close in, but uh, he won't get close enough. I'm trying to see if there's how much traffic's ahead of Neil, but I think it's fairly clear track. Oh, as you see, the flash of a slower car just ahead of him as they come up to the chicane for the penultimate time. One of the Dolomites there. The Hermitite Dolomite. It's Nigel Garrett. Yes, the uh, Ken Clark car. Dolomite stayed out of the way. And uh, going on to his last lap, there is uh, Matt Neil. Uh, just over a dozen, 14 seconds left on the clock, so he had time in hand. But the Ward, Ward Rover, 3.1 seconds behind. Don't think he can do it. Got Manassia up into uh, fifth place in number three, as we said, ahead now of Piro. Uh, Manassia and Piro have both gone past uh, Peter Mallet on that lap. And the race leading Bastos Camaro, the gap is really, really coming down, but he has no traffic ahead of him. He shouldn't be interrupted. Matt Neal goes through St Mary's now. About a second and a bit behind is Chris Ward. He's closing very fast. It was 3.1 seconds between them as they started their final lap. Look how close it is, Mark, because that's a second, if anything. Absolutely right. And uh, Chris uh, Ward piling on the coals. He gets out over the kerb, and that's a vicious twitch from the tail. Just one tyre on the kerb at Lavent. So was that the moment that his chase came to a conclusion? He took two seconds or so out in the first part of the lap, but Matt Neal now, using all that Chevrolet horsepower, goes down into the penultimate corner, sweeps his way into Woodcut. It'll take something terrible for him not to complete this run. Yep, here he comes into the chicane. The Rovers are using all its grunts and all the track as Nigel Garrett goes through in fourth place. Uh, pretty much a lap down here then to win this Jerry Marshall Trophy race. It's uh, Matt Neal converting David Clark's uh, opening stint to victory. David will be thrilled. Uh, David himself, a previous winner of the Spa Six Hours uh, Endurance Race and uh, partnered by uh, multiple uh, British Link Car champion. The two minis are finishing together. Absolutely fantastic. What a sight that is. Uh, awesome stuff. The mini of uh, Jordan, number 60, the car started by Nick Swift, um, was in third place. So that's a great result for the mini team and uh, Nick Swift will be over the moon uh, at that one. Ponchon, Manasca and uh, Manasca and Piro were only 1.9 apart at the end of the previous uh, lap. Terrific last lap dice between the Alpha and... Uh were, uh, by and large, a bit more reliable this year, they weren't were. they? Yeah, but they were spectacular, but they didn't come away with any results. Now, coming through into fourth place, the final car on the lead lap is the Chevrolet Cam Camaro that started on pole for Stuart Graham, handed over to Nigel Garrett, had that twitchy moment, it didn't, it cost it track time, but not position. So fourth place after a second fumble with a pit stop window and a safety car in two years. Yep, uh, through in fourth place in the number one car. It's 14, 6, 60 and 1. 
Who is going to be fifth? Is it going to be Nick Manassian in three, or is it going to be Emanuele Pirro in the BMW with the UFO stripes all over it? Well, I think they're now classified. They were lapped no, they down. Threw, yeah, they were lapped down, yeah. Yes, they were. So it was the so number it was three. was very close at the end. It was very close at the end. And then uh, behind them, uh, the Swift and Plato Mini, um, number 63. That's Glenn Swift and Jason Plato. Well, what thoroughly fantastic entertainment that was. A shame we had a safety car and added another twist to the equation, but the sight of the Camaros battling with the little minis, the Rovers charging up through the order, the Capris giving their all, the BMWs, the Masters, that gets my vote every time. There's always a twist in a touring car race, isn't there? And, uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. And the big Chevrolet, which has been smoking all the way. And uh, it's there. There's the Jerry Marshall Trophy Part 2 under the governorship of Martin Hunt. Uh, first, number 14, David Clark and Matt Neal, the Chevrolet Camaro. Second, Chris Harris and Chris Ward in number six, the Rover. In third place, number 60, Nick Swift and Andrew Jordan in the Mini 1275 GT. Fourth, number one, was Stuart Graham and Nigel Garrett with their Chevrolet Camaro. In fifth place, number three, Paul Pochiol and Nick Manassian in uh, their Ford Capri. Sixth, number 25, the BMW of Phil Perriman and Emmanuel Pirro, the 530i. In seventh place... Looks like it was the 63 Mini, which was Glenn Swift and Jason Plato. And then 8th, uh, Tiffany Dell and Peter Mallett with the number 9 Rover. Ninth place, the number 8 Ford Capri of John Young and Steve Soper. In 10th place, the number 17 Mazda of uh, Patrick Watts and Ian Cowley. 11th place was the number 5 Alfa Romeo, Snowden and Whale. And in 12th, the Blackburn Thomas Capri, number 27. Well, here down in the uh, assembly area, it's time for Matt Neal to uh, unfurl himself from the Chevy. Can't, so they, looks like they can't get out of the left-hand door for whatever reason. Maybe it's just easier for a big, tall bloke to uh, crawl across the car. And uh, he's a very, <laughs> he's very a happy chappy indeed. There's uh, Hank Hope Frost down with, uh, with Matt Neal. And uh, David Clark will be over the moon at the uh, Luigi Bastos Chevrolet Camaro has prevailed here at Goodwood today. That's the garland and the hat then to uh, Matt Neal who brought the Camaro home and with him is Henry Hope Frost. Lovely moment climbing out the passenger door. That's a good start to a year. Where's David? Oh, well done, man. <laughs> David Clark and Matt Neal, ladies and gentlemen, winners in the Bastos Camaro. Well done, mate. Well done. David, you did a good job yesterday and you set it up for him perfectly today. Well, I tried hard. That's the main thing, yeah. And uh, who hit me? Jeremy Clarkson. Or Tiffany Dell, so one or the other, I think. Uh, yeah, but that was great. What a fantastic job he did. And the whole team, actually. It's the first time it's raced since 1983, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. Very excited. Well done, man. Well done, David. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, ni nice to have rear-wheel drive again. Uh, it's just, I mean, what an animal. I mean, what a piece of kit. It's an absolute dream to drive. Just so much fun. Could you see uh, Chris coming up behind you? Yeah, I could see. I was, because obviously we don't have car to pit radio in uh, here, and um, they gave me the pit board, and so then I saw him coming, and then I thought, well, is that him? Is that it? And then I thought, yeah, he's getting his, uh, he's picking his heels up, so I had to sort of get my head down then. We don't want car to pit radio, that would spoil it. Yeah, and then uh, the clutch was sort of going a bit, so I was struggling on the down change, and the alternator light came on about four laps from home. So I was trying to switch off everything I could in the car just to try and save, uh, save a bit of juice, but um, I, was, I was glad when the chequered flag came. Well done, Matt. Congratulations. Thanks very much. <laughs> Matt Neal and David Clark, let me try and find... Uh, tr trust you to photobomb my interview. Well, that's because I, I had to see Mr Clark because I love him dearly, and I just had to point out that I had no option being fully alongside with two wheels on the grass, and a touch was... I, I think you got fastest lap. Yes. Not bad for an old man. That's no, all right for an old man. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Really? Take it away from me. <laughs> I might have been joking. Right, where are my second place finishers? Where are... Where are the two Chris's? Can you move over? All right, we'll do third place first until the two Chris's turn up. Uh, Nick Swift, Andrew Jordan. Um, happy with that, guys? Nick, you started. Oh, over the moon. Absolutely. It's like winning a world championship. That's fantastic. <laughs> Good attitude. Um, you can't compete, even you with your ability, you can't compete with that massive V8 grunt, can you? 
No, but we give it a good go, and um, <laughs> it's, you know that car's a giant killer. Look at the size of it and the horsepower of it. But everyone gets behind it here, and I was amazed yesterday when Nick was racing home. It's the fans got behind it. It's a little underdog. It's like a cart with a body, isn't it? It is. It's, it handles absolutely fantastic. It's like a little go kart or big go kart. But no, really enjoyed my racing this weekend. It's been fantastic. Love sharing with Nick. Really, really good bunch of guys. I really enjoyed it. Well done, Andrew Jordan, Nick Swift, third place in the mini. Well done, chaps. Right, let's go and have a word. There they are. Look, they're hiding in the corner. Our second place finishers. An amazing recovery drive uh, after the problems yesterday. Let's wait for uh, Martin to catch up. Chris, uh, you started. Happy with that? Oh, fantastic fun. Does it get any better than that? It's a mega car, isn't it? It's fantastic. It's just uh, a big, sideways, very stable weapon that you can enjoy on every corner. Uh, what was the problem yesterday? Um, back of the powertrain, back of the transmission, Cranwell and Pinion wasn't sitting very well together. They fixed that, and then we think there's just there's something there that's not balanced. We still don't quite know what it is, but we've driven through it, and it's a tough old boat, and it, it's a little the worse for wear now, but it survived the race, so fantastic. Well done. Chris Ward, you brought it home. Uh, you had the uh, Bastos Camaro in your sights, though. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, today is all about thank you very much to the boys. They did a fantastic job overnight to get the car where it is, and without them, we wouldn't be here. So, JD Classics, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was lacking on straight line speed um, on the Camaro, but uh, we made, made up for that through the corners. But as Chris said, we've still got a misfire. Um, so, hopefully, uh, next year we'll have a, a car that's on song, and uh, we will uh, give them a, the uh, Camaro a good run for its money. Well done. Chris's Harris and Ward, second place in the Rover SD1.